what can be a better way to get stronger than picking up boxing and taking your physical prowess and your willpower to a whole new level. Well, the Soviet athletes were notorious for their willpower, as well as their trance-like stage right before the competition, to the point of being portrayed as cyborg-like beings in the Western media. Particularly in the case of Soviet boxing, which along with wrestling and gymnastics was one of the most prestigious sports in the USSR. So guys, put on your gloves and let's step in the ring. There were not many countries that had the art of boxing being elevated to the level of national idea. USSR was one of those few countries. Soviet boxers competed mostly in the USSR itself, with many clubs, championships and entertainment events taking place on a regular basis. Although the Soviet Union has begun participating in the Olympic boxing events as late as from 1952, they have quickly regrouped and reached an enormous success and have brought home many gold medals, which encouraged the further promotion from the government, stimulating many young men and boys to sign up to their local gyms. Without a doubt, boxing has reached a cult status in the country, However, it did have a bumpy and a difficult start. To understand the full picture of its origins, you have to briefly mention the events of the situation before the Great October Revolution. Back in the Tsarist Russia, there was also an abundance of the traditional fistfighting events. However, they are very difficult to compare to what we are used to see in the modern boxing. The first open club of the British-style boxing was opened in Moscow in 1894 by the high-ranking Royal Guard officer. However, in the old capital city of the Saints Petersburg, this trend has started at least seven years earlier. With the main difference being that the Saints Petersburg schools only favored the nobility. Back then, boxing was a sport reserved for the elite, as the high-level fistfighting methods were taught and practiced mainly among the aristocrats, high-ranking officers and other nobility. In the first years after the revolution, the situation didn't get much easier, as the newly formed Soviet government was still unclear of what to do with it. They were thinking of limiting or completely eradicating flashy-looking sporting events, fearing that it could lead to the creation of the underground events with the aims of making private profit. Nevertheless, in 1918, just one year after the revolution, due to the decree of Lenin, a new training methodology for the military was to be implemented, and boxing was included in that training methodology with an objective of toughening the bodies and the minds of the soldiers. Boxing coaches and experts that were hired to teach the soldiers, though, were the old nobility. Many folks looked at them with suspicion, however, they were once of the lucky few nobility members that were spared by the newly established Soviet government. And due to the new wealth and opportunities which were brought by the Lenin's new economic policy, NEP, in 1922 Arkady Harlampiev, yes, that Harlampiev, one of the forefathers of the Soviet Sambo, he was the one who pioneered and organized several first professional boxing events, which in times of NEP were also allowed to carry commercial elements. Unfortunately, the results of those events were rather catastrophic, as soon after that, boxing, both amateur and professional, were completely banned in the Soviet Union, on the grounds that boxing had elitist roots and had no place in the communist society. And indeed, things looked rather grim for the boxing enthusiasts. However, by the mid-1920s, after many debates and considerations, the amateur boxing was brought to life yet again, and it wasn't just a simple revival, as it got more support than ever before, and in 1927 the first USSR championship took place. Still, the beginnings were rather modest. During the first championship, many weight categories consisted of just a couple of fighters, and in some extreme cases, there was only one boxer present in his weight category, and such boxers got the title of the champion in their particular weight class without even stepping in the ring, which does sound quite absurd, doesn't it? That occurred due to the fact that uh, boxing was still being banned in many of the Soviet republics, so the number of representatives was very, very limited. Nevertheless, starting from the 1930s, 
in my opinion, the most interesting period of the Soviet boxing, the real development and implementation of the governmental policies has started to be apparent. The massive and organized popularization campaigns had an enormous success. The number of gyms and schools was growing at a colossal rate, with even women boxing clubs appearing for the first time and enjoying a relative popularity. Of course, the professional commercial boxing was out of question since it was against the communist values, but the amateur variety became to be regarded as one of the essential educational methods of the Soviet citizen, a soldier and a worker. Following that trend, by the mid-1930s the number of registered boxers was around 13,000 people and in the beginning of 1950s it grew to around 40,000. It is important to note that it was precisely from the 1933 when the all USSR boxing championships have started to regularly take place. It seemed like nothing could stop this boxing craze, as it was getting bigger and bigger, not by the years, but by the months. Alas, the World War II brought a momentary halt to most events, including boxing. However, it is interesting to note that boxing events came back full force by 1944, even before the official ending of the World War II. Back then, the Soviet boxing needed a fast evolution, since it still wasn't very different from the aristocratic fist fighting that it inherited from the Tsarist times, and since it lacked the Western professional scene to drive the competition and development, the Soviet Union took a different approach, by embedding it so deeply into the culture, making this art almost essential to be considered a real man, a true citizen, and a true defender of the motherland, this kept the individual drive for the improvement among millions of enthusiasts who were not even registered boxers. Though officially it was indeed amateur based, the fights were always fought under the professional rules, and the Soviet coaches took the inspiration and information from everything they could, including from the rare western literature, video commentaries, uh, rare homebrew methods, and even breathing exercises from yoga and the controversial self-hypnosis methods. All that, along with huge internal competition and a well, creative Soviet mind, gave birth to the unique Soviet style of boxing as we know it today. Of course, there are many subcategories in the Soviet boxing, as well as in any type of boxing or martial art, since any good coach will tell you that in the end of the day, the styles and rigid methods are meaningless and the training should be based instead on the strength of a particular individual. On top of all that, back in those days, the USSR was not yet member of the AIBA, the International Amateur Boxing Association, so it competed and developed strictly inside its own borders. However, starting from 1952, the Soviet boxing team has seen their first international debut in the Summer Olympic Games that took place in the Finnish capital city of Helsinki. The Olympic scene has given an even wider push to the development of boxing in the USSR, as it received an additional role of protecting the national pride and boosting the international image. However, that is a story for another time, I will make a video about it soon. The next video, however, will be about the creation of the Moscow Metro, secret underground cities, bunkers and more. If you enjoy my content, subscribe and help this channel grow as more stuff is coming. So guys, have you tried boxing before? What do you think about the art as a whole? Do you think it helps to build strong character and body? Kindly let me know in the comments below. So guys, see you in my next video. Until then remember to stay strong, stay healthy and to never neglect knowledge. Peace out.